Good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Charlie Weinberg and I get to do the opening because I am the chair of the Centre for Crime and Justice Studies and we are delighted <laughs> to share in the production of this evening's very special event with our colleagues and collaborators, Women's Place UK. It is wonderful to see so many people here with such an interest in this such important issue. And by my estimation, and I have to do a disclaimer, maths is not my thing. Lindsay, my colleague, does the simple maths in our office. But we represent probably, this number is about 15% of the women's population in the UK today, which is either a very small number or a very large number, depending on your perspective. I am not, I've not been convicted of a criminal offence and I've never been sentenced to prison. So I can't claim to speak for women in prison. And I believe that women in prison are each different and distinct. And by no means is this an attempt to speak for a conglomerate group. My role here is to give some context, let everybody take their seats, settle down while we prepare for our expert panel and your own interesting, thoughtful comments and insights after the conversation. But I did get three minutes, so I have got three things to say. <laughs> Firstly, the title of Women's Place is Not in Prison clearly relates to women on remand or sentence, and perhaps if we are minded to remember those in detention and immigration centres so often overlooked in these conversations. It is worth remembering, I think, however, that the vast majority of prison visitors and supporters tend to be mothers, wives, girlfriends, exes, sisters and aunties. And these women attend prison with all its humiliations, dress codes and disturbances, often over many years. Two. There's only three, and I'm on two. It is true, and often cited, that many, if not most men in prison, experience and suffer racist, class-based, and multiple discriminations before, during, and after their sentence. It is also true that homelessness, addiction, unemployment, sexualised crime, violence, poverty and educational exclusion will be highly significant factors in large numbers of the lives of men in prison. This event is about women because it is also true that women suffer and experience all the issues of mental distress, self-harm and exclusion above. But what is inalienably true for women in prison is also that they tend to receive either shorter or longer sentences than their male counterparts. 62% of women in prison will serve less than six months in custody. Women more often have parenting responsibilities and a named tenancy and are more likely to be primary carers for children. Women have hugely disproportionate experience of having been in local authority care. If I tell you that the general population is 1% of children with experience of local authority care and in prison, women are 34% more likely to have spent time in local authority care. And according to a 2021 study of 350 women in four Scottish prisons... 86% of women, if you want me to repeat any of these numbers, I will, if I can see you. 86% of women have a serious head injury. That's not the kicker, because 70% of men in prisons generally have a head injury. 86% of women in these four prisons across Scotland had a serious head injury as a direct result of domestic violence. Finally a thought about the double bind of having a flawed, failing and fatal system 
and no alternative available to many women experiencing sexualised and violent crime committed against us. This isn't the system we want, but it is the system that we have, and making it obsolete takes time. Meanwhile, when women want to access the criminal legal system, we have far too much recent and historical evidence of the ways in which we are denied, denigrated throughout the process. And yet, when women are pulled into the criminal justice system, it is usually, as you will all know, for non-payment of fines, shoplifting, drug trafficking and occasionally violence. Women were being released from prison last year with a tent and a sleeping bag and this morning I was in a meeting with colleagues, some of whom are probably in this room, discussing three or four girls under 18 who've been moved to a YOI because the secure training centre, the secure children's home they were placed in has been closed immediately due to concerns around safety. The colleagues on our panel tonight, I did say maths isn't my strong point and I don't know if they'll still be smiling in a minute, but I reckon represent about 150 years <laughs> of experience, not of life, but of experience... Uh, expertise and our chair, Alison Bailey. Many of you will already. <laughs> Needs no introduction, but is going to get one anyway. Our chair, Alison Bailey is a barrister specialising in criminal defence law. She has spent 20 years defending women caught up in the criminal justice system. She is a feminist, a lesbian, and herself a survivor. In October 2019, Alison launched the Lesbian, Gay and Bisexual Alliance, the LGB Alliance. <laughs> and I think that is testament to the fact that she is indeed a powerful voice in the struggle to maintain women's sex-based rights and protections.